What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here, and welcome to part two of the Android Smartphone Smackdown. In round one, we covered screen, call quality and speaker, battery, text entry, browser speed and operating system. In this round, we are going to cover the camera qualities, both still and video, the designs of the phone themselves, multimedia, and some miscellaneous specs. So sit back, relax, and let's see who's the king of Android. All right, let's go ahead and jump into camera. Both of these sort of sport very uh, high-tech cameras. Uh, both have eight megapixel sensors with dual LED flashes. So you can see there is the eight megapixel sensor on the Evo, and there it is on the Droid X. You can see the LED flashes on each. I'll go ahead and uh, jump out of that. So one thing that, that I should mention too, this is going to kind of come into play, is the Evo has a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera. So I'm going to go ahead and put up some sample video and pictures of each, and you guys can be the judge um, for what you think looks a like better picture and video quality. All right, so they're both being recorded at exactly the same time at pretty normal light conditions. You can see sort of what each look like. All right, so they're both being recorded at exactly the same time at pretty normal light conditions. You can see sort of what each look like. Okay, so picture and video quality using the 8 megapixel sensor is pretty darn close. Uh, they both look very, very similar. Um, one of the big differences here, and I mentioned just a few minutes ago, is the addition of the front-facing camera on the Evo 4G. It is a 1.3 megapixel camera, so it's a pretty capable uh, camera. So taking the whole ability to video chat out of it, the fact that you can sort of take yourself portraits of a bit more accuracy or take video with a bit more accuracy and sort of see yourself or see what you want to show, uh, definitely gives the edge to the Evo, uh, certainly considering that camera and video quality it looks to be very close. Uh, but that's not the only determining factor here. Let's talk about the camera interfaces since Motorola and HTC sort of put their own take on how you interact with the camera. I'm going to go and show you what that looks like. So we'll jump into camera here, and it's the same thing for a video as well. So you get a sort of a few options. I'll go ahead and put, let's say, my keys in here. So we have sort of a subject to focus on. And if I look at that, you can sort of see what the choices are going to be. You can turn the flash on or off. You can certainly zoom in if you'd like. You can jump into photo or video. You get some complex options here. So you have uh, you've got brightness. You've got your contrast, saturation, or sharpness. You can pick some effects if you'd like, and then you can sort of jump at the settings. Widescreen, you can pick the resolution, uh, even some ISO settings there as well, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty advanced for a camera phone. So we'll go ahead and jump out of this. And let's take a look at how Motorola has implemented their camera. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll jump into camera and see what we have here. It's a very sort of different take uh, on the same thing. So they've got something called scenes. I want you to sort of pick how you want to look at things. So auto, portrait, landscape. We'll go ahead and jump back and see the sort of differences for each. Uh, you get some effects as well. So normal, black and white. Turn the flash on or off or switch to. Uh, both have really good uh, focusing mechanisms and the picture quality like we saw uh, is very close. Uh, the Droid X sort of gives you more general options, I'd say, for novices. Uh, whereas if you're sort of a serious photographer and you left your DSLR at home and you have to use your camera or, or use your phone, uh, you're going to get a bit more options, ISO settings, contrast ratio, um, you know, white levels and balances. So if sort of what you have the options to do, I think the Evo has got to take the camera around uh, because of the interface and the front facing camera. So we will go ahead and jump on to the next uh, category which is going to be design. How are the things going to look when you whip them out of your pocket? Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about size of these. 4.3 inch devices are very, very big. And uh, if you look at these next to each other, it almost makes the Evo 4G look small. And how can that be when they both have the same screen size? Well, look at them next to each other. I'll sort of line up the bottoms. 
And you can see that there is a difference here with the Droid X. Uh, definitely is a bit larger, and if I hold them next to each other and side by side, uh, you can really see that difference. And you can see that there is also that hump. Uh, from a thinness standpoint, they're both very close, uh, but that hump, whether you love it or hate it, uh, is definitely an aesthetic difference. And it is going to make the Droid X be actually bigger, and for a 4.3 inch phone that's already going to be creating quite a bulge in your pocket, um, you're going to have even a larger one uh, with the Droid X. So there are some other differences as well. You've got capacitive buttons across the bottom uh, to do your controls. We actually have physical buttons here on the Droid X. Now, generally, I have not been the biggest fan of capacitive buttons. For instance, on the uh, Nexus One, they weren't very responsive. I've sort of found that on most devices, they're not very responsive. However, on the Evo 4G, they work great. I haven't had any issues with them whatsoever. Certainly, the physical buttons uh, work just as well. Both have sort of dedicated uh, some camera functionality. The Evo 4G also sports a kickstand in case you want to watch the multimedia, which is quite nice on a screen that big. You're not going to sort of get that same thing with the Droid X. Now that hump may be to sort of make it look a little bit uh, flatter on the surface and less sort of moving around as we've seen in some other devices. It does sit very well. And the camera sort of jutting out. You get sort of that classic Droid look on the back. We saw the initial Droid, the back uh, is not metal, sort of a soft touch plastic. Uh, but from a design standpoint, which one looks better, uh, certainly I think that has to go to the Evo 4G. Uh, the phones, both phones look great, but if I'm going to use something that's got a 4.3 inch screen, I want it to be as small as possible. And from a smallness standpoint, uh, the Evo 4G is definitely going to take that. All right, so let's talk about multimedia here. Both support HDMI out for connection to TVs or your computers, which is really nice in case you want to watch a movie or something or a video clip that you made, you can go ahead and watch it right on your TV. Uh, however, the Droid X supports DLNA, uh, which is a Digital Living Network Alliance, which allows you to uh, watch media on other DNLA devices, such as TVs or laptops. Um, so it's certainly a nice plus. It also has Blockbuster built in. You can actually download movies right from here. You can see Blockbuster right there. We saw that, um, I believe, on the HD2 as well. So you get sort of another way to view content on here. In addition to what we talked about earlier, a little bit of a nicer screen makes multimedia viewing on the Droid X a little bit of a better experience. So let's talk about specs just real quickly. These things are very close, but I couldn't in a good conscience talk about both these devices without mentioning that the Evo 4G is called 4G for a reason. Uh, it does support fourth generation wireless networks, which are noticeably faster. So without talking about megabits per second, and getting to the actual sort of nitty gritty, just know that 4G can be uh, up to 10 times faster than 3G networks. So you have the option of being on a 4G network if you uh, have service where those are, it's been rolling out more and more. Uh, with the Droid X, you're sort of limited to just the 3G, which is great for most people, uh, but it's nice to have the option. So if we're talking about sort of specs and these sort of miscellaneous intangibles, I have to give a round to the Evo 4G just for having fourth generation wireless technology and having the option to either use it or not use it. So for everybody keeping track, here's how the rounds broke down. The Droid X came out strong. It took screen, call quality and speaker, battery life and text entry. Uh, the Evo 4G swung right back, taking browser speed. Uh, we tied in the operating system. Uh, the Evo took the still camera, it took the video camera, it took the design. The Droid came back with multimedia, and that miscellaneous specs, the addition of the 4G, uh, is what gave the Droid, or gave the Evo 4G, rather, the edge in the end. And for the final total of Droid X5, Evo 4G6, and one round is a tie. So we still have the reigning king as the Evo 4G. Now that does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that the Droid X is a inferior phone, uh, just so there are some intangibles that give the Evo 4G a bit of an edge. If you want to pick up a Droid X, you're going to get a fantastic, very capable device on a really reliable network. Uh, so really there are no losers here if you have to pick one of these phones. Uh, it's like picking between chocolate or ice cream. Both are going to taste delicious and you're going to end up with a delicious treat. Uh, no matter which one you go for. So anyway guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the website for all your tech news, interact with users in our built-in social network, or even make your own sub-blog with full WordPress content management and 
put in your own ad code and even make a buck or two. For exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. I am John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.